Joining me right now is Terrence Duffy. He is the chairman and CEO of the world's largest futures market operator, the CME Group. And Terry, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Well, thank you, Maria. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but unfortunately, the travel situation didn't work out. Yeah, we, we, we wanted you here on set because you're here for the whole hour this morning because it is Jobs Day. What's your take on the markets reacting this morning to the serious strikes, uh, Terry? Because, of course, once again, we've seen a real volatile situation at the lows. Markets down 140 points, and now we're looking at perhaps a, a higher opening, depending on what those jobs numbers say. Yeah, and Maria, my, you know, you look at the marketplace, and the market it needs to always manage its risk. So when we look at our volumes just of last night, we were up probably 3x in volume on a traditional day because of what happened over in Syria. But I think your, your prior guest, your prior commentator, made a comment that he didn't believe this was a blow that was a, a knockout blow, which is true. This was a signal. And now that's the way the market is taking it. This is a shot over the bow, as they call it in the business, I guess. And now we're going to have to take a wait and see attitude, like everybody's saying. And that's what the markets are doing. So the markets, I think, are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They're not overreacting. We are seeing oil come up, as you said earlier in your earlier comments, but it's also coming up, up off a sell-off. Gold is setting a new five-month high, as you also referenced, which is something you'd expect to see. So these are all normal factors you would see in any type of geopolitical events. But this was a very targeted strike by the U.S. on Syria. And so I, I think the markets need to, I'm not a bit surprised that they've come back up to a steady on the day. So give me, give me your sense. I mean, you mentioned volume, and obviously that's uh, what we're all focused on. You've got 90% market share in global futures trading and clearing services. Uh, wh what is your take on market performance these last couple of months? Markets up still about 14%, 13% since Election Day, even though we've seen a bit of a, rollback, a rollover recently. Uh, is this all about policy out of Washington, Terry? There, there's a lot about policy out of Washington, Maria, but you also have to remember there's a lot of other policies around the world. And it's not just Brexit, which everybody likes to talk about. We need to talk about the French elections. We need to talk about the German elections. What does that mean for the European Union? So there's a lot going on outside of the U.S. that has an impact on U.S. markets. So many participants from around the world, Maria, manage their risk in the United States of America that they have with their own sovereign uh, countries. So we're seeing a tremendous amount of risk management, not only at CME Group, but in U.S. marketplaces from other parts of the world. And it's so it's a very interesting time that we live in. But if you look at the volumes just for, you know, as us as a proxy, we're about year over year flat, roughly about 17 million contracts. The last several weeks, you know, a little bit lower. And now with this activity, we're starting to pick up again. So you're, you're going to see a little bit more volatility, but a lot of uncertainty yeah, in the marketplace. Yeah, I want to get your take on how the environment looks in terms of jobs. Of course, we got the jobs number out this morning. But let me first kick it off with the President Trump uh, and Chin Chinese President meeting his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping. Is that his Mar-a-Lago estate uh, meeting for a second day today? The two leaders set to lay the framework for U.S.-China relations going forward. What do you hope to see from this meeting, Terry? as a global leader yourself with, with business all over the world? Well, Maria, you know, you were seeing a lot of protectionism around the world. So just in our world alone, when you saw the London Stock Exchange and, and the Deutsche Börse deal uh, go down in, in flames, you're seeing people protecting their national assets, such as their exchanges and others. In our world, we live in a very global world, uh, Maria, as you know. So our markets are already all over the world. So what I'm hoping to see come out of the meetings with uh, China and President Trump is, is cooperation. I mean, he's talked a lot about the half a billion dollar trade deficit. I'm assuming he's going to continue down that path because that was in his campaign uh, stump speeches along the way. And I think that's what we're going to see. I don't think we're going to see a, a bunch more coming out of that. And I would hardly want to speculate on any other policies such as what he's going to say to them about North Korea and other things. Yeah, let me, let me ask you, because one of the ways that the financials are protecting uh, th their market share is, is with big data. And I know that you have been investing in, in organic market data uh, with new product offerings, Terry, and that one of the top stories in the journal today is banks clash with the New York Stock Exchange over data. So give me your take on this, mm. the data clash heating up between the banks and the New York Stock Exchange, and, and this attempt to a certain graded control over market data as you yourself at the CME Group uh, invest in organic uh, data. How important is big data with regard to the financials? Well, data is very important, Maria, for a whole host of reasons. But the most important reason is it gives the world transparency into what prices are actually being traded at. 
So that to me is what's important about market data. So we've got to be able to disseminate it and when you have a neutral facilitator of risk such as CME Group or Intercontinental Exchange who owns the New York Stock Exchange disseminating this data, it's important that the world understands that this data is coming from a whole host of people. And to do that, there's a cost associated for the exchanges to produce this and distribute it so they have to recoup some of their costs associated with it. What the New York Stock uh, Exchange's plans are and what the article in the journal refers to today, I really have a hard time speculating on it because I don't know all of their policies. But, you know, you have to understand that the New York Stock Exchange is owned by the Intercontinental Exchange. They have made a very concentrated effort to go into market data. Right. They acquired a company called IDC for just north of $5 billion a couple of years ago. And so that's a big part of their offering today. So I'm assuming some of the big banks and some of the comments you saw in the journal today yeah. are probably a little concerned about the direction of where NYSE is going and they're trying to get out in front of it because historically this has not been that big of an issue. Yeah, because the issue is who owns the data, right, Terry? I mean, the, the JP Morgans and the Goldman Sachs of the world say, no, 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 we own the data. The New York Stock Exchange says, no, we own the data. So as a, as, as a leader of, of one of the exchanges and the largest in this regard in terms of investing in your own data, who does own the data? Well, you know, first of all, we put a lot into the infrastructure to distribute this data. We invest in it heavily, so I guess there will always be a debate about who owns this data, right. if anybody at all owns it. But I will say that it's a service that suits the public's needs, and we can't have this data be hidden behind closed doors. It's got to be transparent. It's, behind, uh, it's got to be transparent, yeah. and the people that don't participate in the marketplaces are the exchanges. So mm. we're the natural distributors of this data. But what's important here, Maria, and I will speak on behalf of my colleagues at the NYSE, we all invest heavily in the distribution of this market data right. so everybody can have it globally. It's just not four walls and a gathering place for trade like the New York Stock Exchange or the CME used sure. to be. Yeah.